Welcome everyone. Today I'm going to demonstrate the new Comet browser by Perplexity. Well, we've been so used to using Google Chrome, but today it's one of the most amazing browsers out there and very, very powerful. So I'm going to demonstrate a lot of the features so it's easy for you to start using Comet. And then of course it boosts productivity quite a bit and I'm going to demonstrate how that works. But first let me show you how to download. So in order to download the Comet browser, simply navigate to perplexity.ai forward slash Comet browser, or you can search for it. And here is where you can click on download Comet. Once it's downloaded, simply install it. It's fairly straightforward. It's not that difficult. So once it's downloaded and installed, you'll have an interface that looks like this. And once you're here, you can simply do a simple search. For example, by default, the Comet Assistant is here, but I'm gonna demonstrate first the search itself, just like we searched in Google. And then on the top nav bar or the menu, you can take a look at there's options like assistant. There is a voice capability, which is pretty neat. And then of course you can take a look at the option where you can summarize the current web page. You can take a look at extensions. And of course you can copy the URL that you're actually working and then bookmark. And here are all these settings that you can take a look at and you can customize the version that's for you. For example, I chose Neptune, and that's what it is, right? So once you have this, you can go ahead and also take a look at the widgets. So I can click on Edit Widgets and add, for example, the clock, the weather is already there, a few games like the wormhole, for example. The assistant is already there, discover, and so on. I like the sticky note. This is pretty neat. It gives me a nice option as soon as I open the browser. I can take a look at the tasks that are left and I can customize these as well. So click on done if you need to edit or I can delete these tasks right on the browser itself, which is fairly neat. So once you have this, next, I'm gonna show you the assistant. Now the assistant is pretty powerful. If, if I click on the assistant, what this does is simply opens up the assistant. Now on the bottom here, I can ask anything, right? So let me go ahead and add a new right or ask anything you know so for example if i need to so i can say something like can you write a cloud formation template for s3 and vpc and let's see what this does let me go ahead and correct these spellings here perfect so what this does is it's going to construct the cloud formation template so it's very very fast so i can simply copy this or i can customize it based on my own requirements so this template creates the s3 bucket and a basic a vpc and also explains the VPC includes a single public subnet, internet gateway, route table, and the essential associations, right? So if you need to customize it, you can simply ask it to do anything. So this is fairly fast. Now, keep in mind, this, this is just the assistant while you have the browser itself. Now, if I need to search something, I can simply do the search bar as well. So it's like a dual functionality. So it works pretty well. And I can simply copy the template and use it wherever I want to do. I can also do a no line wrap if I need to, and also gives me the sources and of course the steps as well, okay, how it did it. And this is fairly powerful. Now what I can do is I can open up the library and because this saves everything in the library. So even if I go to a new tab, I can always bring this back by clicking on the library and then click on, can you write a cloud formation template? And boom, it's right here. Or I can just open up a new tab. So it's fairly robust in this respect. The other capability is the voice assistant. Now this is fairly neat because I can simply speak to the browser and ask it to do something for me. So I can say, for example, if I can click on the assistant and I can say something like, can you write a cloud formation template for EC2 instance? And I can click on, of course, the arrow and it will go ahead and write the cloud formation template for EC2 instance, okay? So it's fairly straightforward. You can use either the voice command or just simply type or ask for it to do something for you. You can also attach documents, there's attachments. So you can click on the attachment and it'll open up the file explorer. And then you can of course attach whatever it is that you wanna attach and ask it to analyze the document and so on. So it's just like a search, right? Or it can do things for you. All right, so, and again, right here in the browser, if I want to close the assistant, I can simply click on the close assistant and it brings me to the browser itself. Now let's do some of the search. For example, some of the optional or default is I can scan my inbox for deadlines. It will go ahead and scan my Gmail. 
or whatever email I have account, it will pull up all the emails and if I tell it to do something, it will do it. Or build a grocery cart with all the ingredients for a Caesar salad. Let me review it before checkout. Let's go ahead and try this. So this is simply a search criteria, right? So that's what it does. And it goes ahead and finds the sites for you. And then, of course, it compiles the grocery list with all the necessary ingredients for a Caesar salad for my review. Now, this is fairly powerful because in Chrome, of course, we're just searching and it gives you a list of links and we can click on it, right? But here it's actually helping us not only search, but also suggest, recommend and move forward with our tasks, which is fairly neat. And of course, it reasons it. It's not just giving you a list of uh, the blogs or articles or resources. It's actually telling me exactly it's going to compile the list and, of course, with the ingredients for a Caesar salad. And likewise, I can search any of these you know, anything, for example, right? This is one of the examples, the default that I picked in. And if I don't want this default, I can always, you know, choose or search anything, right? So that way you can actually take a look at it. Now on the left menu, while it's doing the search, on the left menu, you'll have the plus sign, which is a new thread. So if I click on it, of course, it will open up a new thread and I can search something like which AWS certifications should I get? And now it's gonna explore the most relevant AWS certifications from all the sources, it lists the sources right here so I could actually see where it's searching. And then the assistant will tell me the beginner foundation level certifications, the associate level, the professional level. The neat part here is if you scroll down, it gives me the related options. For example, if I need to explore AWS certification paths for specific job roles or compare the foundational and associate level certification. Now, these are the questions that you probably would get as soon as you do your first level search, right? So this way you can actually, instead of typing again, you can say, well, fine, explore the certification paths for specific job roles. And now it's gonna go ahead and map all these AWS certification pathways tailored to specific cloud related job roles. And it searches the AWS documentation. And of course, it's gonna give you the list as well. Now here it is. So that's a pretty powerful way to search, to navigate, to actually find what you're looking for. And it's actually assisting you instead of you trying to search and trying to figure out where the best certifications are and whatnot. So it gives you a nice list as well and gives you advice as well. Well, now it asks you, would you like a deeper breakdown or study resources for a particular job role or AWS cert? So once again, it's actually leading you towards something that you're really looking for, right? And eventually you'll get to that point where you'll actually get the answer that you're actually looking for. So that way it's pretty neat. Another feature that it has is the share button. So you can actually share the thread. You can copy the link and of course share it to anyone, send it to your friends, colleagues, or your keep it for yourself if you need to. So, and here's the home button. If I navigate to the home on the left menu, notice I have finance, travel, academic, sports, and then of course my library is here as well. I can discover, if I hover over the discover option, it's for you, top, tech, finance, arts and culture, sports and entertainment. This is the latest news, for example. If I need to click on tech and science, it's gonna go ahead and of course open up the latest news for tech and science, which is not bad. All right, so, and then of course the spaces is where I can create my own space. This is another feature that it has. And here's my account. I can upgrade to pro, go to preferences, personalization, assistant tasks, and other options. I can also use the API as well. So everything is built into this one robust browser where I can do anything I like, whether it's myself searching or I can have the agent capabilities. Now agent capabilities is only when I upgrade, which means that the agent is going to do things for me itself. So for example, if I tell the agent to uh, do some grocery shopping and buy things for me, it's going to open up the browser and do that for me as well. But that's when you upgrade. But basic browser is free. You can download it and of course work with it. Let me know if you have any questions and let me know also in comments down below what do you think about using Perplexity Comet versus a Google Chrome? And what do you like about it? And what do you dislike about it? Okay, I hope this helps. Let me know if you have any questions with this. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.